Hey guys, welcome to a different kind of video. Today I'm going to be sharing a collaboration video. I asked a bunch of booktubers to share their favorite Christian fiction book that they read in 2023 with you guys. And this video is a compilation of their video clips sharing their favorite book. And I love the diversity on here. There are some books that I have read, some books that I haven't read, and all of them that I haven't read instantly I put on my TBR because I'm very curious. I love it when people talk passionately, passionately about books, and so I'm hoping this will help you guys to find more books to dive into, find more YouTubers to check out. I will leave everyone's channels linked below. Go check them out, go watch their other videos, especially if you find that they talk about a book that sounds really intriguing. I bet they have more videos on their channel that would interest you. I will be popping in a little bit later in the video sharing one of my top favorite Christian fiction books of the year. It's really hard just to pick one. I'm, I'm sorry, I made everyone else just pick one, but it was difficult. Okay, let's get into everybody else's videos. Hi, it's Lou from Christian Faith and Fiction. I had several favourite books, but the book that I rated the highest for story, enjoyment and Christian faith content was Set the Stars Alight by Amanda Dykes. This is a dual time period novel in the contemporary. It's following Lucy and Dash who become friends when they're children and later on they meet up again. Lucy is very intent on finding out what happened to a particular ship back in the Napoleonic Wars. And then the historical fiction is following Frederick and some of his friends in the Napoleonic Wars and when they go to sea. And some of the things that happened, it's got romance in it, it's got um, sort of the myster mystery of what happened to the ship. And the writing particularly is very beautiful, um, very poetic, and there's a lot of metaphors and sort of undertones that go with the story. I liked the faith content to it. There was sort of allegory as well, I felt, as well as some beautiful passages that spoke to me. Um, so I think this is probably what my favourite one of her books that I've read so far. I have a Christian fiction book to add to the table that I think is really awesome. It is a book written by Erin Phillips, who is, I believe she's an indie author. It's called A Crown of Chains, and it is an Esther fantasy retelling. So here is the synopsis really quick. Becoming queen is not the end of a fairy tale. It is the beginning of a nightmare. When the queen is exiled, every beautiful young woman in Florencia is forced to become king's maids, royal concubines, but one lucky girl from those gathered will be chosen as queen, or maybe not so lucky. Roxana Willows, a wingless fairy with the rare ability to read minds, has seen King Frederick's cruelty in the stories her uncle tells, and fears that the only thing worse than being a king's maid is being the king's wife. While her heart already belongs to another, she feels obligated to obey her uncle when he tells her to hide her heritage as a fairy in hopes of being chosen as queen. But becoming queen is the last thing Rox Roxana wants, and it will cost her everything. A Crown of Chains is a fantasy retelling of the, bi of the biblical story of Queen Esther with fresh twists based on the original context that is sure to thrill in this timeless tale of miracles in the midst of forgotten faith. Filled with political intrigue, forbidden romance, and dire stakes, A Crown of Chains is perfected for fans of Red Queen, The Selection, and The Cruel Prince. I think it's a really good book that really anyone can read, but especially teenagers maybe who want uh, a fun way to gain insight into what it would have really been like for Esther and all of the other girls who were were chosen to become king's maids or concubines. A touch of reality, even though it's a clean young adult book, but it still um, touches on some heavy topics, some reality checks. It's not a sugar-coated story of Esther. It's real, it's raw. There's my suggestion for a fun young adult Christian fiction book that I think even those who are adults will enjoy. Hi there, my name is Alma from Alma's Book Journey, 
And my number one Christian fiction book of 2023 was definitely the book by Becca Kenzer called Dear Henry Love Edith. And the reason that this was my favorite book of all of them was because I read this to my husband aloud and we just had a fun time as we read through the story about a couple that write to each other these letters, but they both think that they're old, an older couple and then they have a real relationship with each other in this wonderful little town that the people there are hilarious. And that's where all the humor comes from comes from the misunderstandings and it's just hilarious there was a scene in the supermarket if you have read the book you know what i'm talking about and then also there was a cute couple that was like an abbott costello kind of <laughs> funny um banter that they had back and forth and my husband loved it we were just rolling and when i asked him hey you know what book should you know what book should be my favorite one and right away he said that one so that one is my Number one Christian fiction book that I read, um, Dear Henry Love Edith by Becca Kinzer, and I believe it's her first uh, book. So if you haven't read it, go check it out. You, you, know, you won't regret it. It is such a fun, lighthearted, you'll, you'll be laughing out loud. Hey, y'all. My name is Amanda from the channel, Book Lover Amanda, and I love Christian fiction. I read a lot of different genres, but my favorite Christian fiction book of 2023 is... When the Day Comes by Gabrielle Meyer. I also really love book two in this series. This is a timeless series and it's a Christian historical romance series. But book two, I gave five stars as well in this moment. But ultimately, book one is my favorite. This book had me invested from the very beginning. I love time travel. This book is a great, clean alternative to the Outlander series. It is beautiful. This is all about Libby. She lives two lives, one during 1774 Colonial Williamsburg in Virginia and the other life is in 1914 New York. And so so she wakes up every day alternating these different timelines in her life. And so when she turns 21, she has to make the decision to either stay in 1774 or in 1914. And so what Libby is going through is very difficult. She has had to make some very hard decisions throughout this story. And, you know, it's just how could she ever make this decision of which timeline to stay in? She has parents in both both timelines, all these different things. And it's like, will God lead her to where she's meant to be? What is his plan throughout all of this? And, you know, can she change history? All these things, we see all this unfold. And it's just so, so good. My favorite part of this was the time travel aspect. And, you know, we see her back and forth and just just wrestling with these thoughts of what to do. The romance in this is top tier and there's a twist in this that you will not see coming. It is so, so good. I had no idea. And we really see her just trust the Lord for the best path in all of this. This book truly just shows how the Lord works as, as many say in mysterious ways, but we all know that it's his ultimate plan for us, even if we don't see it at the moment. So yeah, I cried. The, the ending is so, so good. Great Christian historical romance and you will not regret picking this up. Hi, my name is Anne from Over at In Search of Wonder. I read a lot of great Christian fiction in 2023. There were several that I gave four or five stars to, but the one that kind of rose to the top for me was The Extraordinary Deaths of Mrs. Kipp by Sarah Brunsfeld, which was a debut novel by that author. And it was just incredibly well-written and engrossing story, and you really came to love the characters, particularly Mrs. Kipp. Interestingly, the synopsis itself, when I heard what it was about, did not really interest me very much. Um, it didn't seem like you could really make much of a story out of it. So um, the only reason I initially picked it up and read it was because so many people in the Christian fiction fan community were raving about it and um, saying thing, extravagant things like, the best Christian fiction book I've ever read, the best book I've ever read, etc. So I finally decided to give it a try. And I was so glad I did. It is very, very rich and deep with real faith, but not in a preachy, pedantic sort of way. It's very, um, it's, it's everything that a story should be, particularly a faith-filled, redemptive story like Christian fiction should be. It's not really about Mrs. Kipp's death, although the story starts out with her entering hospice care and she does pass away during the course of the novel. It's really about her life and how she lived it and how the story of her life um, 
is an inspiration to many people, not the least of which is the journalist who is interviewing her at the end of her life in preparation for writing her obituary. So it's an extremely well-written novel, a wonderful read, very engrossing. It made me cry and it made me laugh. It was everything a novel should be and one of the best examples of Christian fiction out there today. So like I said at the beginning, it was hard to pick just one book. There was numerous Christian fiction books that I loved this last year. I have a whole video sharing all my favorite books, um, but I decided on this one for a particular reason, and this is Twice Sold Tales by Shatona Havig. Now, when this video comes out, book two in the series is actually has just been released, and it should be arriving at my house the day after this video goes live, so I'm excited about that. I thought that was a good sign that I loved this book last year, that I went and ordered book two as soon as I could. And so Twice Sold Tales is part of the Book Strings series. This is book one, but there are two novellas you can read first, but they all have to do with bookstores that are struggling a little bit financially. And we have a character named Milton who his job is to get businesses out of debt. And during the Book String series, he focuses on bookstores and he runs all these ideas through people like different ways they can increase their business and is someone that like dreams secretly not so secretly dreams of opening a bookstore but like also not really um I, I just really enjoy the ideas that Milton has so in this one we follow three main characters and we have like alternating chapters by them we have Harper she has just inherited the bookstore uh, from her no, I'm totally blanking her aunt I think her great aunt and then we have Noah. He recently became a dad to a seven-year-old. And then we have Milton, who helps the bookstores get back on their feet. And what I love is each chapter that are Harper's, they start with some kind of like snarky book shirt saying, because she's always wearing these like snarky shirts. Uh, Noah's chapters always start with parenting tips. And then Milton's chapters always start with a book recommendation. And I thought this would be a good book to share here because not only are you getting this book as a recommendation, but you can go through and read the top of Milton's chapters and use all those recommendations to read even more books. And funnily enough, at least one of the books that's mentioned on there is also mentioned in this video. So that's pretty cool. Um, highly recommend checking out the series. I can't wait to read book two. Hey everyone, I'm Katie from Paperbacks and Ponytails. And uh, my favorite book of 2023 was The Warsaw Sisters by Amanda Barrett. And let me tell you, be prepared for the snot and have the tissues ready because this is a an emotional read about two sisters during World War II, right in the beginnings during, in Warsaw, Poland. They're following them as their father goes off to war. They're left alone with their aunt and something happens where they are left completely alone. They end up in an argument and they end up splitting up and each one of them ends up integrated into the resistance in World War II. And each one has their part in the resistance helping out with the soldiers or with, um, with the wounded and everything. And it was just a heartbreaking and very sweet tale about two sisters who are just struggling to survive. And we're seeing the kind of behind the scenes look of what it means to actually be in the resistance. I know some stories where you only see like a little snippet, but this is a story where you get to see the day to day lives of what resistance workers went through, what went on, what happened. And I usually recommend this book to fans of The Nightingale or The Book of Lost Names, as both of those were heartbreaking um, about stories about women who are, on, who are in the resistance, especially The Nightingale, because we're following two sisters. But if you like The Nightingale, read this book. And also, I love this one way more than, than The Nightingale. So make sure to check this one out. I don't think you will be disappointed. It is a five-star read and just so amazingly good. Hi everyone, my name is Lindsay and my channel is Lindsay from BFCG because I run the blog Books for Christian Girls. Thank you so much to Chantel for letting me talk about one of my favorite books from this year. It was really hard to narrow it down, but then I saw about the Read Your Bookshelf Challenge and it worked out. It's perfect. One of my favorite Christian fiction books from 2023 was Every Dog Has His Day by Janice Thompson. 
this is kind of going to be like a three for one in that regard so like you can cross off a prompt for the read your bookshelf challenge for january if you'd like but then also it's book five in a six book series so i'm kind of am i cheating potentially just a little bit i'm so sorry but all i'm gonna say is you ought to read the first book first and then read this one but let me tell you a little bit about the series so this series is all about the staff at this vet clinic in Texas, and it's just so much fun. It's humorous. They are cozy mysteries, but they have no murder and no dogs are injured, and that's the important part. This book, though, was just so, so cute. Look at the little doxy. How can you not love the little doxy? I, oh, so cute. But this one is probably my second favorite in the series. But I read it last year, so that's why I'm counting it for this prompt. I gave it five stars, and I rarely give five stars. And it was just so cute, so fun. There's good faith content, a super sweet romance that was clean. Just so much fun. I could just fangirl about... I could fangirl about this series forever. I would suggest reading the first book first, but that's just because you see all the characters again. And you may even see a very important wedding at the end of this book. So, it was great. So much fun. Five stars. What else can I say? Just, it, it crosses a prompt off the list. It's cute. If you want more in the series, there's more. Like, it's just so much fun. And if you pick it up, I hope you enjoy it. Hi everyone, my name is Oshina. I'm from the channel Oshina Gotta Read Em All. And Chantel asked us to share our favorite books from 2023. Well, just one. But it was really hard to pick. Like, what, Chantel, how can I pick one book? It was really hard. I read mostly Christian romance, so I have read several good ones from 2023, but the one that I'm going to recommend in this video, which is so hard to pick, seriously, I literally, I'm torn equally between these two books. Chantel, I can't do it. How do I pick one? There's not one that stands out above the rest. Chantel, am I allowed to cheat? And I know you can't answer me right now, but like, okay, people just, I'm going to hold these two books up, but the one that I'm going to talk about is this one i think okay so this is dear henry love edith by becca kinzer this is actually a new release from 2023 and if you like funny situations cute small town romance that's what this is in this book you follow edith who is looking for a kind of short-term place to live and one of her friends is like oh my uncle has a place you could stay with him and the way that the conversation went made edith think that henry the uncle was like an elderly man so she's like okay sure like uh, sure i can even like take care of him a little bit like that's fine i'll move in with this guy and then how the niece pitched it to henry is hey i have this like widowed friend who just needs a place to stay will you let her stay with you and again the way the conversation went henry assumed that edith was an elderly woman so he's like sure yeah i'll let her stay with me and i can look after her a little bit and they have opposite schedules so it's one or the other he works in the day she works in the night something like that where they just don't see each other so they end up leaving notes on the kitchen counter she bakes him baked goods and he's like that's an elderly thing to do but meanwhile henry and edith meet each other in real life in their small town and kind of catch feelings think they're really cute so they start telling each other in the notes on the kitchen counter about each other without realizing it and that whole situation played out in such a funny way. I loved it. So highly recommend. It is very funny. The townspeople are really funny. And then the way that the plot goes, the ending is really strong. It, it goes global. I'll just say that. So it was really fun for that. It kind of had a lot of different aspects, like small town, but then also there's a bit of travel involved too. So highly recommend. This is my favorite, one of my favorite Christian fiction books from 2023. Hey guys, my name is Stacy, and thanks so much to Chantel for inviting me to be a part of her video. It's very exciting. Uh, my favorite book that I read from 2023 was The Land Beneath Us by Sarah Sundin. I still haven't read the other two books in the series, but they're definitely high on my list. I chose this book because of the emotional roller coaster it put me through. I rate my books based off of how they make me feel. There were many times in this book that I cried. It's about a man who is in the military and he's in a base in Tennessee and he's currently training to go off to fight in World War II. And a woman who grew up in an orphanage and she becomes a librarian 
I believe it was on the base. And so they meet each other, they become friends. And one night um, she gets attacked. And because of the attack, he ends up marrying her. I don't want to give away too many details, but it is a marriage of convenience. And then he gets shipped off to fight in the war. Uh, and over time, they fall in love through writing letters back and forth to each other. There were so many amazing um, faith elements in this book, especially within the letters that they wrote. There is also a big plot line of forgiveness throughout this book, which is another thing that I really love in my Christian fiction. So yeah, if you are looking for a historical marriage of convenience type of story with a lot of faith in it, I would give this one a try. Thanks. Hey guys, I'm Holly over at A Lovely Day with Holly. Um, I'm going to be talking about three books um, very, very quickly that I happen to own that were uh, favorites from 2023. Heart of Red, Blood of Blue. Dangerous Beauty and Calor. So uh, Calor is a YA fantasy. There's a lot going on in this one. There's a lot going on in all of them, right? So anyway, I'll just say Calor, YA fantasy. Dangerous Beauty is more adult, contemporary. It deals with um, human trafficking and there is a bit of a romance in there, but it's not, it, it's more of like a, a heavy, hard hitting kind of a romance. And then Heart of Red, Blood of Blue, again, is I think YA fantasy or is it adult fantasy? And these three are all Christian. And I gave all, I think I gave these two, no, I think I gave all three of them five stars. So, I gave all three of these five stars and I would highly recommend all of them uh, to anyone. So go check them out. Hey guys, it's Alicia and I read a ton of amazing books last year, some really great Christian fiction, but the one that I decided to spotlight today is one that I still think about and still talk about and was just absolutely beautiful. And that is Before I Called You Mine by Nicole Deese. This was the first book that I read by Nicole, and I don't even know why it took me so long to get to it. She is an amazing, amazing author. It was so full of real life struggles and pains and the hope of faith and life and good things that will come and love and real life coupled with love and how love in real life isn't always happily ever afters. Um, and sometimes it is and it just might not be in the right timing that you think it is. And healing and grief and fear and worry and doubt and all these emotions, but coupled with laughter and joy and swoony romance and dinosaur loving main, main, main male characters and adoption and all the lovely things. Um, this book was just full of greatness and it's one of those that I feel like I read it longer than a year ago only because it was like it has stuck with me that it feels like I've known this story longer than a year. I think this is definitely one that if I could reread a book for the first time again and experience all the feelings, it would probably be this one. Nicole has become a favorite, an auto buy because of it now, and I'm so excited to read her other books and she is just absolutely fabulous. And if you have the time and you need something that is sweet and heartfelt at the same time, like you will get the romance, never fear, but you need and you want something more than that, this is your story, 100%. Absolutely great. So there you have it. There are all our favorite, favorite <laughs> with some like uh, you know favorite can mean more books than just the ones we shared as well uh, but some of our favorite christian fiction that we read in the last year this collab video was a lot of fun to put together and i think i'm going to think about doing more of these in the future maybe like different genres um, if you guys are interested in being one of the people that shares a clip of your favorite book in a certain genre i'm going to put a form 
below in the description box that you can fill out and then I'll email those people whenever I want to do another video like this. If you guys just enjoyed watching this, I would love to hear if there's a different genre that you would like to see next. It's fun to collaborate with other booktubers because I don't see this place as any kind of competition. We're a community, we're sharing ideas, sharing book recommendations, and exploding each other's TBRs. So thanks for being here guys. Make sure you go check out everybody's channels that I have linked down below.